Hi, welcome back to Ribbon Candy Hooking. I'm Diana. Today I wanted to talk about something very basic. This is a beginner video talking about how to cut your strips. If you are getting involved in rug hooking now and you are realizing that there's a lot of information out there, but things like um, the, the hook itself could be quite expensive. I hope you're not letting anybody talk you into a $70 hook or something as a beginner. Uh, hooks can be expensive. The frame itself can be expensive. Sometimes using the hoop isn't as successful as a frame, so you feel that there's gonna be a huge expense there. And then you're wondering how you're going to cut the strips of wool that you will use to do the hooking. And this can be an astounding put off because of the expense of cutters. So there are several kinds of cutters, including the Sissix cutter and the Bliss or the Fraser cutter. I've talked about both of those in other videos. I use both of those often, but as a beginner, there are other choices that are not in the hundreds or thousands of dollars. Uh, it's always very surprising to me when I look even on um, social media, buy and sell type groups, people often post wool strippers or cutters um, and say, you know, only $500 or even only $200. And it's certainly a fact that not everybody readily has even $100 to spend at that moment on something to cut wool. So I wanna show you what some of your alternatives are as a beginner hooker. Uh, the best alternative is this. It's a pair of scissors. People have used these through the ages, of course. Um, if you feel that at this moment in time you have more time than you have money, then this could be a good option for you. When you are, let me back myself up a little bit, when you are doing very basic things like cutting your strips with scissors, it's going to work just the same. Primitive rug hookers, meaning the earliest rug hookers, um, you know, ripped their strips. So that's what I'm going to do. It's always good to put a little nick in it first. Uh, this way I've got my wool and I'm going, this is the selvage edge, which means that's the finished edge. I literally put a notch in it. That's how the first rug hookers stripped their wool to make the beautiful rugs that we now see in museums and on auction sites for tens of thousands of dollars. This is ready to go. This is a thick one, but you can make it thinner. I cut it that way along the selvage. This is how I just cut this strip. Just to show you on this side, I'm gonna cut it this way. This is across, not along the selvage also rips, right? So one of your great options, if you particularly, if you like the idea of primitive rug hooking, which means the more folky, um, sort of naive looking rug hooking, not untechnical, not less fantastic. It's just a style of rug hooking called primitive. Uh, and one of the things that marks that style is the very wide strips that people use now and used the first days of rug hooking when they cut them this way. This is absolutely viable and people still do this method on purpose, ripping your strips uh, to make their rugs look more primitive. That is an option. Another good option is going to be, because so many people who are coming into rug cooking have been quilters in the past, is using your rotary cutter. This will take time, but again, this video is for people who are beginners, who are not sure that they like this craft yet and they don't wanna spend hundreds of dollars on a cutter, if you don't want to do the very wide primitive cut and you want to cut a little bit more narrow, this is what you can do, just what you'd expect, right? I've got my wool out here, and if you are a quilter, you already know this. I'm just lining up a clear ruler. Of course, I've got my scar proof board under here. They sell these at Michael's, Joann's, any craft store, so that you don't cut through onto your table because this is one blade, right? That's a giant blade, uh, and that will do damage to your hands, to the table, to whatever. So I've got my um, self-healing uh, dritz or any brand mat, and I've got my piece of material over it, and I'm just positioning a clear ruler uh, because this won't easily cut this. You, you know this if you're a quilter. If you're not, you don't know, but these two items are quite inexpensive. You can get these three things together, mat, cutter, and ruler. You can get these together at craft stores or online, Amazon. I'll put a link on this video. So I'm pressing down my ruler, got my blade ready to go. I'm gonna run it along the edge and my, sh my thing is not sharp enough, so that was a bit anticlimactic. I gotta put new blades in. But you know what, a new blade for a rotary cutter uh, is a lot cheaper than a new blade for a cutting machine. 
So you can cut your strips this way too. As you can imagine, it's gonna take longer to cut your strips if you do it this way, but you know what, who cares? Set yourself up on a coffee table or on a card table or at the dining room table while you're watching television or you're hanging out with the family and just say to myself, I'm sitting here for an hour, I'm gonna cut as many strips as I can. It doesn't matter which way you cut them, they're gonna make a nice solid strip. I wouldn't cut them diagonally because they have too much stretch and they're gonna fray. Make sure you cut them nice and straight. Go along the selvage if you can, first choice but make sure you use as much of the material as you can, particularly if you're using recycled material and you're cutting up clothing. Use as much of it as you can. That's a great time to use your rotary cutter and your ruler. It is not expensive. It's an easy way to get things done. Ripping is also a fantastic way to get things done. And at the end of the day, if it took you an extra hour to cut your strips for your project, particularly if you're a beginner and you're doing a small project, not a full size rug, who cares, right? It took you a little more time. Who cares? You manage to do it without colossal expense and you buy yourself a little bit of time to decide whether you love doing this and you do want to spend a couple hundred or a thousand on a cutter in the future. That'll be up to you, but this is a nice entry level way of getting into the craft and having the materials that you need without hemorrhaging tons of money. So I hope that was helpful. I'll see you soon on Coffee Time back on the Ribbon Candy Hooking Channel. Bye for now.